ET Electronics Letters UK. His current research interests include MIMO and cognitive radio, circularly polarized antennas, metamaterial, meta surface for antenna and absorber design, and frequency reconfigurable active array antenna with beam steering. We all welcome you, Dr. Chaudhary, for today's presentation. Thank you, Mahesh, for the nice introduction. Thank you, Mahesh, for the nice introduction. Sanjeev, hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Sanjeev, uh, I can see. Sanjeev, uh, I can see from two devices. From two devices. Yeah, I am so logging from two devices. That is why. That is why. This, that this is why. Is this. Actually, uh, it's not a question. Lot of ego is coming actually. Ego is coming. Actually. Yeah. I think you you, you sign out from one device. It's not coming. I can't. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. So now the echo is not there. Uh, it's there actually. Uh, it's there actually. Yeah, now it's clear. No, 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 I can hear my voice no, again. I can hear my voice again, actually. Okay, okay, sir. I am just uh, closing my one. Now, sir, you are getting the echo? Hello? Yeah, Hello. I think this is fine. Yeah, I think this is fine. Okay, okay, sir. But it's still uh, small uh, equals small equals I think you, we are you have to... Everyone now. We are okay. meeting everyone. Okay, so... Okay, so... Let me start. Let me start. So what I what I what I will do uh, uh, actually uh, because echo is co continuously coming okay so I'm removing the headphones correct and at the at the last I'll take the question answer okay I'll speak first then I'll take the question answer okay then I'll take the question okay okay, okay sir okay. fine thank you so much so okay. So thank you, Sanjeev. Uh, so uh, today's so, session. Uh, today's session. Yes, sir. In today's session, I'll I'll uh, cover circularly polarized metamaterial antennas. Correct. So this is one of the area where uh, we are working at IIT Dhanbad. Correct. So before uh, before the CP antenna, CP metamaterial antennas, the idea was how to develop the compact antennas. Correct. So. Let me, uh, yeah. So <clears throat> let me introduce first uh, about my history where I'm doing all the research actually. So you can see uh, this is a building actually where uh, we are currently doing all the things, correct? So we have all, um, all uh, instruments, correct? And facility to do uh, this, this research actually, correct? And uh, currently, uh, Seven PhD students working with me, and four are already graduated. And my lab is actually sponsored from uh, the DRDO, ISRO, CRB, and other funding agency projects. So, in today's uh, presentation, I will try to cover uh, these content. So, we will start from the motivation. We will try to learn uh, what are the electromagnetic metamaterial. Then, we will see the transmission line approach of the material. And uh, most uh, important, uh, I'll discuss the CRLS transmission line, which is composite right left handed transmission line. Then we'll see uh, the property of uh, CRLS, what that is ZOR, zeroth order resonance. Uh, then we'll discuss about the fundamental limit of the antennas and we'll see what, what is the circular polarization, correct? And finally, I'll show you some of our findings, what we develop actually at IIT Dhanbar, correct? So before doing anything, uh, there, there must be some motivation, correct? And uh, like the motivation, like if you can see this table, correct? A lot of application you can see different frequency, like starting from the GPS, WLAN, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, and ISM bands, correct? So now in a daily life, we are interacting um, with each uh, frequency actually, correct? And now this is a part of our life, correct? So the second photograph you can see, this is uh, 
mobile phone correct here particularly the blue font you can see where six antennas uh, uh, mark actually so you can see this is the lte antenna horizontally polarized lte antenna vertically polarized wi-fi antenna then we have a gps then pcs antenna and 2.45 gigahertz bluetooth antenna correct so it means that within the small small size distance uh, we need to accommodate large number of antenna so uh, the thing is uh, like uh, one of the thing like uh, we, what we want to do actually uh, like uh, if you see uh, some of the, our work actually we try to manage the multi band antennas correct so uh, like here you can see that they, uh, these antennas are distributed over the area of the mobile correct now what we are doing currently actually we trying to do over the same substrate and we will try to make it multi band correct and uh, keeping the fact that uh, how we can do for the 5g antennas as well so currently we developed uh, this thing is a cognitive radio systems correct which is a 5g antennas correct which comprises uh, antenna as well as a multi multifunctional filter correct so that that is actually one of the unique work correct so let us discuss first that thing uh, like like what are the fundamental units of the antennas correct so when we are talking about the compact antenna or mid-size antenna, it is not like that we can go arbitrarily, correct? We can we can uh, miniaturize as, as possible as it is not like that, correct? So antenna can't be arbitrarily small. This is one fact. Another is there is a trade-off between the size, bandwidth and the frequency of the machine, correct? So the thing is, uh, these three uh, actually uh, scientists, Wheeler, Chu and the McLean, studied theoretically that how far we can go means how far the miniaturization would be possible correct so uh, this is one of the current one McLean, which correct which corrects actually the chu and the wheeler and finally he given uh, these theoretical formula by which you can see that uh, uh, what what is the possible uh, q factor uh, radiation quality factor and uh, another is the fractional bandwidth correct so this is valid for the less than uh, Q is less than 2, correct? And for electrically small antennas, which is Ka less than 1, correct? So this is one of the important things. So those uh, participants, those who are working in this area, correct? They validate actually these things. However, theoretically, you are getting sufficient number and when you do the simulation, so uh, the thing is, if the things are electrically small, you can, you can verify. But I suggest you please uh, go through and please try to verify, okay? Now another thing is uh, the before 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 doing the things actually correct so uh, we should see actually what are the what are the main advantages we are getting with this micro uh, uh, sorry metal metal antennas over the patch antenna, correct so like here uh, a very simple example I have taken actually if you see this is a patch antenna correct and normally these are the uh, uh, formulas for calculating the width and length, correct? So what we did actually, we tried to manage it at 1.5 gigahertz. There's a purpose actually, uh, why I did actually, I will tell you. So at 1.5 gigahertz, we tried to find out its dimension. So what we found actually, we found that uh, the overall antenna size is 100 by 100 mm square, correct? Whereas uh, the patch size is 79 by 66.7 mm square, correct? This is a uh, pretty large antenna at 1.5 and and uh, if you see the frequency this is expected actually correct but we cannot deny the size correct now the thing is like uh, uh, if you see this photograph correct we have taken from this uh, paper which is uh, IEEE transition on antenna and propagation published in 2011 correct jang and all so you can see uh, this picture actually so what they did actually they use the vendor line they use the signal patch and they use the uh, coplanar structure. Okay, so here you can see uh, the size of the antenna is 21 cross 25 mm square. Correct. Now this antenna is also working that 1.5 gigahertz. Now the thing is, uh, you will see that the same thing, the same frequency could be accommodated in a small size. Correct. This is just one by four. Correct. So this this actually motivates us that 
can we do uh, can we make uh, the compact antenna uh, for the smaller frequencies correct or rather i should say uh, for the handheld devices correct so here you can see some of the comparison so comparison if you do the comparison it, it is uh, if you give you some negative things correct so those negative things actually we try to accommodate and we try to achieve we try to convert as a positive things correct so i'll show you in the coming slides so if you see particularly here so uh, definitely we reduce the size like here the 100 cm square the overall size and here the 5.44 cm drastically reduced so if you if you try to calculate the percentage reduction it is more than 90 percent correct now uh, on the other hand if you see uh, the gain and the radiation efficiency means uh, the numbers are horrible correct the gain is we are getting minus 2.15 and the radiation efficiency we are getting the 42.5 percentage correct and i would say this is this is not going to be used for any kind of uh, the applications correct because uh, at least we require the two 1.5 to 2 dp gain uh, to run this handheld applications correct and radiation efficiency must be about 75 to 80% correct so the idea is there that how to improve these uh, two parameters of the antennas correct so i'll i'll try to i'll try to show you that how we improved uh, but because i i took a topic here the circularly plug so i i focus over how we did the circular polarization with meta materials correct so so this is a research objective actually so what we said for us that uh, in meta from meta material antennas we have we can achieve the size correct and the second actually which is uh, the objective we took actually uh, this is actual ratio bandwidth correct so when we started uh, uh, the antennas as a meta material antenna the small antennas correct so that time if you uh, if you go uh, the literature uh, so you will find mostly the linear wise antennas were published correct and the gain and the radiation efficiencies was is uh, is it, it is difficult to accommodate for any kind of uh, application possible application so when we started we we uh, we made actually compact antenna and then after we improved the gain as well as the radiation efficiency i'll, I'll show you some of our work actually later on and then after we realized that c antenna is okay but the thing is uh, like uh because uh, there is a problem of losing the signal and all the things so cp cp supposed to be incorporated in those compact antenna which is uh, one of the challenging tasks correct so we we uh, somehow manage and uh, last year we uh, we try to develop an antenna we publish in actually i told you magazine and that is actually very good work correct uh, so i'll share 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 with you uh, that work but how we manage all these things correct so uh, i hope you went through all the historical review because uh, this workshop is mainly focused on the meta material so let me quickly uh, do these things uh, the historical review so this is started in uh, 1968 correct theoretically and then after jb pendry actually uh, realized these things from uh, wires and the srr then after dr smith actually uh, experimentally validated and these two guys actually done for the rf engineer uh, They, they they try to propose the things from the transmission line concept correct calo geometry correct so what is the meta material so meta material like here the normal material you can say is a atom correct electron neutron nucleus and all the things correct so this is the uh, concept actually jude model particularly and when we are thinking about the permittivity and permittivity it is coming from the electric dipoles and the magnetic dipoles correct on the other hand the meta material when uh, we are talking about the this uh, this uh, this art Correct. This is uh, actually main main material, and in a particular frequency band, these 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 structures are showing the unusual properties. These unusual properties are actually what? This is negative mu and negative epsilon. Correct. So mainly uh, you will see the right-handed material and left-handed material. One of the terminologies some people are also seeing double negative material as well. So so many terminologies are there actually. Correct. Uh, one 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 important point here, like uh, for meta materials, actually uh, the k vector and the s vector in the same direction, in the right hand material, sorry, and the left hand material. This is equivalent, or we can say also the phase and group velocity are anti-parallel. So we can we can divide actually in uh, 
uh, four quad. This is uh, the system is like the DPS double positive material, uh, epsilon negative, double negative, and mu negative material. Correct. So these are the some some of the picture photographs of the common uh, uh, structures actually. Correct. By which we can derive all those things. But the idea is our idea is as a Idina engineer, correct? What we are doing in a lab, correct? We are we are highly interested in the ethereum circuit and we will try to uh, satisfy the CRLS property, correct? And finally, we are utilizing it in the antennas, correct? So this is uh, like uh, I must uh, I must uh, point it out these things that there are two uh, approaches actually parallelly going on in the microwave engineering. One is uh, Resonant time approach, correct? Mainly, uh, we are also using this approach in developing the filters, correct? As well as uh, the absorbers, correct? So, uh, basically, uh, the Smith uh, given uh, uh, initially these ideas that Smith resonator and the wires could be the potential, uh, uh, these things providing the negative and negative sign uh, while having uh, the speed should be uh, parallel to the. Uh, the wires, correct, and magnetic field should be the non the y axis, correct. <coughs> so, we are getting actually uh, this negative mu and negative upside properties, correct. So, after that, uh, I means uh, you can see in the literature actually you will find a number of uh, uh, number of papers and uh, they try to uh, they try to uh, arrange those structure 3D structure on the planar structure. Correct, and you can see the split ring resonator, and they also proposed complementary split ring resonator. And you can see that these are the equivalent circuits actually. It's from this paper, actually, you can find the more details. Correct. So, mainly, uh, the thing is uh, the, on the planar substrate, they try to manage all these things. Correct. And later on, uh, later on, when combining the structure, like here, you can see one example where this is uh, two patches are there in between, a gap is there, and beneath of that, we have the split ring resonator. Complementary spirit So the equivalent circuit would look like this. Correct. Okay. So uh, finally, uh, like uh, in a planar tech with the planar technology, uh, the people experimented with the SRR and the wire like this. Correct. And they found that the things are uh, still working with the planar structure as well. So then the things are started, and the main application uh, was uh, boom, like in a filter, uh, these things are uh, absorber, antennas, and all. Correct, and right now the metascopic amount of things are going on. Correct. So these are the some of the structure actually, and uh, we, we should have the basic idea. Like, like the thing is, like if you check the mini paper, the very complicated structures are there. But I would uh, I would say that you please start with the basic structure, what the theory has been developed. Correct. So this is one of the paper actually I uh, I put it here. You can download this paper and you can find that some of the basic structure and its equivalent. Uh, like here. This is the split, kind of the split resonator, and this is the equivalent circuit, and this is the dual of uh, uh, dual of this structure. The equivalent circuit is here. So based on based on that, what what kind of what kind of matching you want, correct? And what kind of dominance, like uh, 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 sorry, uh, inductor or uh, capacitive actually coupling you want, correct? So you can manage with this, correct? So it requires the basic idea, correct? Now let us uh, let us start with the transmission line approach of the metal material. Correct. So this is you can see a very initial one. Uh, the CRLH approach was uh, proved with this uh, structures. Correct. So before starting the CRLH, I would uh, like to discuss some of the things of the transmission line. So here you can see in a transmission line, like in a shunt, you have a capacitance, and in a series you have what inductor. Correct. So the thing is. Like uh, broadly, if you see, so in a shunt, we have the inductor, correct? Now, if you if you go the from the basic transmission line and try to derive its beta, it is coming like this. It is negative, correct? So negative slope, correct? So what if the beta is negative? So you can say that phase velocity and group velocity are anti parallel correct? So this is one thing, correct? Now the thing is, like uh, with this structure, like what I have shown you that the uh, initially the things were started. Uh, with the interdistal capacitor at the stub, correct, and the V actually, correct. So here you can see this is a very uh, very old structure, correct. This is a, not a new structure and the stub, correct. Uh, we have seen in a textbook also, correct. So what they did actually, Kalos, correct, and Ito, they they try to uh, uh, arrange in such a way like uh, 
uh, introducing and the shunt inductor, correct? And they connected with the VR to the ground, correct? So if you try to uh, draw its equivalent circuit, so what will happen? Definitely, these fingers, correct, in gap will provide the capacitance, correct? And the system and which is and the V actually which is going to connect to the ground it will provide you the inductor, correct? So mainly, uh, if you see, uh, the circuit is like the CL in a series and the inductor in a shunt, correct? But the thing is, at, as we know, in a, on, a, on a microwave frequency, correct, we cannot uh, neglect the other effects. Like uh, if, uh, if the gap providing the capabilities at the same time, because due to the surface current, there must be some inductance, correct? And you cannot neglect that inductor. And when you are dealing with a planar line, correct? So upper part, okay, and the bottom part will provide you some capacitance that is here, correct? So we can, so ultimately, uh, the overall circuit we can say is comprises all these four elements, where L stands for the left-handed and the R for the right-handed, correct? And if you plot this dispersion diagram, it looks like this. Like for here, you can see the omega SC and omega SH, omega shunt and series, correct? If these things are equal, so we are saying that this is a balanced line. Otherwise, this two frequencies will be there. And basically, the thing is how you are going to terminate your transmission line, correct? So mainly, you are getting the shunt resonance and the series resonance. I'll tell you these things, correct? So this is what the implementation of the transmission line, correct? So if you put all the units side by side, correct? So uh, you can manage the transmission line, okay? That CRDS transmission line, correct? So these are the different uh, dispersion diagram. I, I think we went through all these things, correct? So I'll not repeat. So uh, this is what actually we are following actually in the lab that how we can do. So we are extracting uh, uh, the parameters of uh, the structure actually, correct? We are plotting the gloss diagram and uh, dispersion diagram, optimizing the things, correct? All sort of things we are doing uh, to manage uh, to manage the CRS transmission line. Okay. Now the thing is, uh, in, in in all of our work, actually we have verified all 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 kind of resonators what we used actually in the antennas by the circuit approach as well. Correct. It is not a very actually a difficult thing. Like you can also do like here uh, you can see in a dotted box. Correct. Two boxes are there. Correct. So one box representing the interdistal capacitor and that is the stub inductor, correct? So for interdistal cap capacitor, this is a very well known equivalent circuit and for the step, they manage like this, correct? Now, once you have this C and uh, L, correct? You can convert in the impedance and impedance. So finally, what you can make a relation. Once you have the relation, so overall you can find what are the LR, CR, CL and L, correct? So theoretically, you, you will be having a guess that what kind, what what type of uh, means capacitance and inductor and how the things are dominating, you can predict, correct? Now, so how you will extract, correct? So the, the extraction is like that, you have a unit cell and you need to make a de-embedding, correct? And you're supposed to use this formula to find it out, its S parameter and finally you can plot the dispersion diagram, correct? So this is all the part, I'll not go in a detail, I hope these things will be covered from the previous speaker, correct? So these are the some uh, some design parameters and all, correct? Okay. Now let us understand these things. You know, zero, zero, zero order resonance, correct? So as I as I shown you uh, the dispersion diagram, correct? So uh, it allows actually what that uh, the resonance index, which is M here, actually, uh, symmetrically uh, we can we can define around its uh, M is equal to zero, correct? So we have a provision here negative side and the positive side, correct? Now, the thing is, like, uh, if you if you, if you you try to plot the voltage versus electrical length, correct? So, what you will find here, that different uh, resonance index, correct? M is equal to 0, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 1. Why this is coming? Because if, if you have the number of unit cell is M, so total number of resonance point will be 2 and minus 1. Okay, so this is the funda actually. That is why they, they put it like this, correct? Now, so for particularly if you see m is equal to 0, there is a straight line, then m is equal to 1, okay, lambda by 2, like that, uh, lambda 3, lambda by 2, like that, correct. So the thing is, like, uh, if you, if you, <coughs> if you observe, 
uh, from this graph, actually, particularly and equal to zero, this is the magic is happening actually. And what is that? That you are getting a constant voltage, correct? Or we can say the equipotential surface, correct? Over the planar transmission line, correct? Now, so this is somewhat actually uh, will provide you some idea actually that because at beta is equal to zero, correct? You can manage any number correct of the frequency because you can you can accommodate uh, the higher frequency you can accommodate the lower frequency correct by tuning your uh left-handed inductance and the capacitance correct so this is this is what actually one of the very important outcome of the crl transmission line that uh that this is independent of the physical length correct it means that the idea of the miniaturization is coming from here correct now we have the two different uh, terminations here that the one we terminated with the open uh, uh, terminated as open ended okay so in that case uh, we have only the shunt elements so the shunt element will be deciding your uh, the resonance correct that is why these two points you can see correct and when you terminate with the short ended to so the series element will be provided you the operating frequencies correct there is a one more validation i would say correct you can do in the lab correct at m is equal to zero beta will be zero correct lambda is infinity so the fields will be vertical correct these are the first order uh, resonance actually so you can see uh, the, some fields are up direction some fields are down direction correct now let us understand uh, the infinity wavelength of uh, uh, the antennas with monopole radiation correct so mainly if you see uh, the zor uh, it will provide your only direction of radiation pattern the, the idea is quite clear that if you compare with the patch antenna, only two sides are contributing in a four fold. Uh, on the other hand, if you see the CRL antenna, the all sides are contributing. It means a circulating magnetic uh, magnetic uh, surface current actually, and you are getting the radiation pattern like this. Correct. Okay. So later on, uh, people are also tried with the wireless geometries. Correct. I will not go into details this thing. And uh, there is one slide actually very important. Uh, we, we, we try to compare these two things. So we develop a patch antenna and uh, versus the CRLH antenna at 2.4 gigahertz. So we, we design the things and these numbers will, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to show the numbers here. So for the patch antenna and the CRLH antenna at 2.4 gigahertz, particularly you can see the patch in cell size is 45 cross 29 mm square, whereas the CRLS antenna is 21 by 24. Correct. So the gain is definitely a less, but it could be utilized for some applications. Correct. And here, if you can see the sum of the characteristic, correct. So we manage almost same bandwidth. Correct. Gain is quite less. Correct. And uh, the thing is, uh, we have the radiation frequencies compared. Correct. So the thing is, what we did actually here, we just manage uh, some uh, metallic post here. So it it is it is going to radiate in a particular direction. So it is actually a directional antenna, like a uh, patch antenna in a particular broad chart direction it is radiating correct so 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 the thing is like we are we, we are uh, we are uh, converting its own direction to distance by holding the post correct so in this way the gain is improved actually and now we can say this is comparable to the patch antenna correct so uh, like if you if, if you can classify the antenna so we can classify like this that purely the crs transmission by uh, transmission line based antenna then we have the loading, correct, and we have the metal resonator and the metal surfaces, correct. So in a, like here, if you see completely, we are following the CRL approach, correct. Later on, if you want the number of bands, correct, if you want to improve a particular band, correct, so you are loading with some uh, metal metal uh, cells, actually. And later on, the idea extended to the metal surfaces as well, and now we are using for the gain enhancement and the beam steering as well, correct. So let us try to understand the circular polarization, correct? Why this is important, right? So first, uh, we should know what are the condition that, that it has the two orthogonal components, correct? And the magnitude should be not uh, same. And it should have the time phase difference of all multiples, which is anti correct? So this is actually, the condition actually is supposed to manage in the structure, correct? Okay. And uh, what it provide actually, it will provide the higher link reliability, correct? And uh, immunity from the Faraday's effect, atmospheric condition and all the things. And finally, here I would say that polarization losses uh, 
means you can neglect actually you can minimize phasing issues correct mitigation of the multi-part propagation right here you can see one of the picture actually so when your incident wave and the antenna polarization is same so you are getting the plf1 otherwise uh, it depends upon the cos5 uh, distance actually correct so if it is optimal you are not getting anything so the thing is like if you have the horizontal polarize and the vertical polarize or you know in your mobile like you are using the LD mobile it having the two actually polarize and uh, two polarize antennas like uh, vertical polarize and the horizontal polarize so uh, many times you are not using the information and particularly MIMO you are using so it it provides you the extra diversity and you are getting the signal properly correct but the thing is if you improve uh, with the, the CP property correct so the thing is uh, the chances the diversity and all the things and the polarization losses will improve correct now some of our finding i would like to discuss with you correct so this is one work actually done uh, by, by one of my uh, entry students samir kumar sharma correct so he published in ieee transmission so this is our work or you can say this is first work actually correct based on the eng transmission line correct so later on what uh, what we have seen that crlh is okay because the thing is uh, like uh, like uh, some higher order modes are also coming and sometimes our focus actually on the higher order mode correct right? and we are deviating from the z1 mode so here what we did we we, we propose actually eng line correct right? epsilon negative what we did for the epsilon negative we just removed the cl part okay what is that cl that left handed capacitance correct right? how you can remove that providing thus those slots or gap actually correct so that those interdictional fingers you have seen correct so those fingers actually now uh, we have removed it. i'll show you this thing. so this is one of this is a geometry actually correct here you can see so what is the contribution uh, the contribution is actually this is uh, like you can see this is a very small entity correct and it, it follows the eng approach correct and here you see the bow type uh, shape patch correct which connects to the signal patch this is the feed actually and this is the upper ground view, correct now what we did actually we we, we did an extra uh, extra thing like we provide a reflector correct at the back side of the bow uh, tie shape patch correct so you can see this a and a this this is this metallic patch actually back side of this thing, correct so what what happens actually when when we when when we uh, arrange in a such a way correct so drastically the frequency we accommodated a very small frequency correct i'll show you so the thing is like if you see particularly this graph correct so uh, you can see that uh, particularly uh, this red dotted curve correct is for the first action when we don't have the lower ground plane correct huh? and as soon as we incorporated the ground plane it reduces to it reduces to 2.4 gigahertz correct so it is 1.3 gigahertz shift the reason is quite clear correct the reason is what that we introduce our extra capacitance due to the ground plane and because of this bow tie and the ground also providing some capacitance so when we model it and we try to find it out the formula and we we, we verified that yes it is working that due to this capacitance actually extra capacitance correct uh, generated actually correct in a shunt down correct we manage this lower frequency so the what is the magic magic is that in a simple in a, in a same design correct we accommodated the small frequency as well correct so what what i would say here that the miniaturization level is 57.9 percent this is quite a big number correct and here the k is less than one so still it obeys the miniaturization miniaturization or electrically small entity Correct, we can say electrically small entity. So this is uh, this is what the major result actually what we found, and it follows the omnidirectional radiation pattern. The idea is same. Uh, the circulating magnetic surface current is around the antennas, and we are getting this things. Correct. Now the thing, the problem was the gain was very less actually. So what we did actually, we used the electromagnetic band gap structure. Correct, and we try to reduce it. Correct. So when when uh, when we reduce uh, the capacitance, actually it, it enhances the bandwidth, and at the same time we got a loss. What loss? The frequency again shifts to the higher side, but not 
not a very higher side like what I have shown in the previous slide, correct? So still we are managing our small, accommodating our small frequencies within a small size, correct? So you can see this is a EPG structure we manage over the upper ground, correct? So you can see here, this is a very uh, good actual picture. So here you can see the first is what without backed ground plane, then we have the backed with the normal metallic plate. So we are working at 2.4. And as soon as we uh, we accommodated the EVG structure here, so it start working at around 3.6, uh, 3.2 or 3.4, correct? But here the bandwidth is increased. The reason is quite clear actually, if you try to derive the formula from this thing, so you'll find uh, the capacitance are responsible because due to this gap actually, sorry, due to this gap actually, uh, the, the distance, the extra capacitance over the surface uh, in the series, correct? And overall capacitance in the shunt actually decreases, correct? So finally, I would say that uh, we, we got uh, average peak gain is 2 dB and the radiation efficiency is 91.3, correct? So we, in, in, a, in a very small antenna, correct? In a very small antenna, we try to achieve all those things, correct? Now later on, uh, later on, uh, we start we, we we start working over these things, and uh, we develop uh, another small antennas, correct? And in this time, uh, what we did, uh, this was uh, this was not going with the conventional design, correct? And the same idea we utilized the background plane. So over the over the same plane, correct? We did not accommodate with the ground plane, and we backed actually the radiators. So you can see here this is geometry, and uh, this is the formula we derived actually, correct? And particularly two resonance we got, one is a ZOR, another is lambda by four, correct? So this is one of the approach. The idea is that we, we try to back the, uh, uh, the antenna actually with uh, this metallic uh, patch, correct? And this is actually, I would say that in a small antenna, this is done um, uh, by our group actually, and uh, uh, we propose this thing for uh, the possible miniaturization, correct? Here, uh, these are the some of the validation. As I told you, we can validate this ZOR by plotting in the vertical field. So we can also do the things correct. And uh, other uh, surface current uh, could be utilized to find it out that this validation is correct or not. Like here, one 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 thing you can see here from this graph is very interesting actually. That particularly this uh, connecting to the radial stub actually. So this length is L M one. So when you are changing actually correct. When you are changing, so only uh, only the ZOR part is changed, correct? And the first resonance is not changed. This is one of the validation by wearing the parameter. You can also validate the structure. But I would say that you can plot uh, the vertical field and you can correct? These are the major results. Correct? I'm not doing now. The thing is, uh, this is what actually uh, what I want to discuss with you. So now we have the enough background to understand this CP metamaterial antenna. Now what I have shown you. Quickly, I shall summarize uh, with you that uh, uh, we have seen the CRLH approach, correct? And we have seen the ZO, how the ZO are uh, working with this CRLH structures, correct? How we can do the miniaturization, correct? And what are the techniques actually we use, like ENG, or one of the possible way to reduce down the size as well as the background plane we used actually, correct? So these are the techniques actually we utilize in the past. So uh, 2018 onwards, we took a challenge that how we can incorporate the CP uh, in the small antennas, which is a bit of the CRLH approach, correct? And, uh, and we, we succeed actually, correct? That how, how the things are working. So it requires some basic idea that what are the field components, how you can manage the electric and magnetic field. The one thing is clear, that from the ENG structures, the fields are vertical over the surface, correct? Now the thing is, another like if we can manage the horizontal uh, fields, uh, the electric field in a plane actually, so the orthogonal field could be managed. Now the other part is that how we can manage this 90 degree phase. So for managing this 90 degree phase, you need to little bit do the optimization, correct? Because the thing is, when you are combining the two structures, correct, and operating uh, almost the same frequencies, Correct and providing the different polarization. Correct and if you want to manage a phase, actually, correct. So what you need to do, you need to do some uh, changes in this electrical length. And hence, you can say that uh, you can providing you are altering actually the phase. Correct. So I'll show you. Huh? Okay. So this is one of the very simple structure. I, we don't want to complicate it. Correct. And uh, uh, the thing is, if you see this structure, you will say what is the metamaterial actually and what. Means, uh, means what is the idea? Uh, 
So this is just made of very simple things. Right? What proposed in late nineties actually those structures. So here the structures are the rectangular stuff, which was used as a virtual ground plane. Correct. Another is a circular ring which provides with the inductance. Correct. And this is the right-handed inductor set we provide. And this is a feed line. Correct. And this thin strip line which connects you, uh, which connected these things to the virtual ground will provide with the left-handed inductor, which is LL in short. Correct. And what we did, we loaded with the single split ring resonator, correct, at the back, correct, and this is the parcel part, correct. So the thing is, what what uh, what experience we have, we accommodate all the things here. The first was the ENG transmission. So here you can see there is no capacitor, there is no scope of capacitance, here, correct, uh, dominating capacitance, correct, definitely there would be a capacitance, but dominating capacitance is not there, correct. So CLV completely neglected. So definitely I'll say this is an ENG transmission. The second part, that's the partial ground plane. Many of you are using the partial ground plane. The reason is quite clear that we want a submission band, correct? Ah, to manage the capacity. But once you reduce this bandwidth and all uh, this capacity and all, so you are losing the antenna performance as well. So we need to accommodate. That is why what we did actually, we provided a virtual ground plane, extra virtual ground plane, correct? So please uh, take care of this part also. This is uh, also a ground plane, which provides a very high capacity, correct? Okay. But it is not responsible for the radiation. Correct. Now, the thing is, like these are the parameters I put it over here. Correct. And the size is actually here 0 0.26 by 0 0.16 lambda naught square at 3.5 gigahertz. Mainly, this is we designed for sub 6 gigahertz. Correct. Now, if you see the design stages, correct. So, I'll, I'll try to explain that how the CPU is coming in. Correct. And this is what actually interesting, and this is what the idea is actually what I want to discuss with you. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, top view actually, correct? And uh, like we named actually antenna one and two and three, like uh, the audience can understand the things. So we started with the feed actually, and then we attached uh, uh, this ring and the virtual ground, and then after at the last we loaded at the back with the single splitting ring. Now the thing is, if you see the antenna number two, correct, which is without without bad single split resonator, we have only one, correct. As soon as you accommodated a single split resonator, correct, the second resonance point is also appearing, correct. The reason is quite clear, correct. I'll show you that thing, uh, this uh, equilibrium circuit and all, correct, and you can find this resonance point, correct. So when we are merging these two, correct. We, we we taken the size such as that these things should be must must be closer to each other correct so we got a very nice bandwidth as well correct and as soon as we got the actual issue bandwidth as well, correct now you will uh, the question is how correct uh, what is what the things are happening like like uh, those who are working in the planar antenna and particularly cp antenna they must have seen uh, the cross lot correct and the, what is the idea of the cross lot the idea is that if you see the electric field, it is also in the future, correct? And uh, by varying the width and length, you are managing actually what? It's uh, phase difference, correct? So that completely you can say this is a self circular polarization, correct? Now, uh, so so finally, uh, the thing is like uh, one exercise we are doing in all the antennas that it's equal in circuit because we are we are we are following the CRLH approach, correct? So it is it is it is really valid that we supposed to do uh, its equivalent and find it out all the possible capacitance inductance correct so that it could be further very verified from the circuit approach too correct so here you can see uh, these things that uh, different inductance and capacitance we manage the idea is quite same correct here uh, what I have shown in here is line sorry, correct so here you can see the L1 correct this is due to the field. Then uh, feed, uh, uh, sorry, uh, L1 and LR actually due to this feed and this thing, this ring actually. And then after uh, we have in a shunt element. So shunt element means what? We connect it with a virtual ground plane with LL. So this is the LL actually, correct? This is the LL. And here you can see due to this partial ground plane, we have a capacitance as well, correct? And this is the capacitance between what? The radiating element as well as what? Uh, this, this ring, okay, and this partial ground correct and finally we have a capacitance too correct 
so now this is what for the upper upper part correct okay now uh, how you accommodate the equilibrium circuit of this back side single split to regulator correct so the thing is huh, like uh, this has already been done by uh, these people actually and they published nitrate transition on micro resonant technique so we took it straight away correct this single split regulator and see its equivalent what they given in paper and we just added correct and we found that this is one of the validation of uh, these things also that uh, yes what the things are published we supposed to validate too correct so this is exactly the things are working with here also so this is a complete uh, circuit diagram i would say and what we did actually we put it in areas and we cross verified all the things correct and uh, the thing is if you try to find it out f z o r so the expression would be like this correct and uh, for the frequency for uh, circular split limit uh, this is the expression this expression we we taken from this paper correct uh, then after then after then after the thing is like uh, one thing actually i missed correct uh, that uh, sorry so so uh, so so before that before jumping over all the result actually i would like to clear uh, how we are getting uh, the cp actually correct so the thing is this is eng transmission line like if you plot uh, the electric field the electric field will be normal of this things okay this is quite clear even if you go with the simple microscopic approach also so you will find the many uh, many of the electric field are normal to the surface correct now at the same time when you incorporated this single split resonator correct what you will see is a gap between correct and this will provide this will provide you a uh, space here to accommodate the planar electric field or horizontal electric field so the thing is you have two orthogonal field components now after that how we accommodated its face actually 90 degree we try to enhance the radius of this single split resonator and hence changing the electrical line definitely there will be phase change and and at particular this things we got a 90 degree phase shift between these two component and hence we, we we said actually that we got a cp condition correct and this is validated correct now here if you see these these are the some of the validation like we 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 done actually ls ls is actually ln correct and this is open ended structure actually so that is why changing the ls actually these uh, this zor frequency is changing correct okay and particularly if you change uh, the width of uh, this thing cs yes, correct there is a no change okay so there is this is the beauty actually uh, of this crls transmission line that when you have the open structure correct so only the shunt parameter will be responsible for changing your the region other will not change correct so this is one of the things correct so theoretical proof also i would say and further we we validated with the equivalent circuit and all we what we found that dispersion diagram and other things are quite clear actually correct now here you can see uh, one of the proof also for this uh, these antennas so <clears throat> particularly if you see if you try to plot the surface current correct so zor is mainly due to uh, uh, this uh, shunt elements okay and the shunt elements coming from this very thin line correct and uh, if you plot at 3.3.7 uh, gigahertz correct okay so if you see the back loop so single split resonator is only responsible for all sort of things correct so we can say that these two resonances are actually indivisibly means you can control the upper uh, upper uh, upper geometry okay antenna geometry and the this loading element correct now this is uh, one of the proof actually what i told you uh, this earlier actually that by changing the radius correct of this bag Uh, single split resonator correct you can manage actually you can manage the phase shift between the two orthogonal component and this is quite clear when you are changing actually you can see the axial ratio is drastically changing correct ha ah, like the thing is just just having the orthogonal component will not serve the purpose of the circular polarization it require the 90 degree phase shift too correct so this changing the electrical length at some opti optimum uh, radius actually will provide you a uh, Actual issue bandwidth. And this is what actually is acceptable to the two degree. And now, if you if you try to plot uh, the bulk electric uh, surface current, so you will see at a different uh, different angle it is start rotating. Correct. So this is one of another validation. So we try to prove actually that how the things are happening, why the things are happening, and how we can validate 
these things also correct now finally we we, we performed the experiment and uh, we got a very uh, means, uh, good results actually we got a very good agreement also too actually huh? and uh, between uh, between 3.32 to 3.90 uh, we got around 15.44 percent bandwidth and actual ratio is same also is around 7.25 percent this is a quite good actual ratio and could be used many applications correct uh, like many of the space applications too correct and uh, then after we have seen the gain also and what we found that uh, okay let's say a relation we will say is quite uh, acceptable because the backed uh, splitting doesn't is there so improvement is there actually and again, if you see, this is uh, roaming around uh, around uh, uh, 3.3.2 uh, distance around 2, correct? So the thing is, like we want a very good game actually, because some of the uh, space application we require a game at least 3D, correct? Uh, more than distance, correct? So, so if, if I summarize here, so the frequency what we uh, we have actually 3.5, we got the bandwidth 580 megahertz. Actual ratio bandwidth is 7.25, correct? And the gain is 2.7. Efficiency is quite less, so we try to improve. Correct. Now, how we improve later on? Uh, the thing is, uh, uh, what we did actually, we used uh, uh, meta surfaces. Correct. Like uh, here, uh, we used uh, artificial magnetic conductors. Correct. The idea is quite clear. Correct. And a lot of things already happened. Correct. We just integrated here. So, like if you see the PEC, correct. And if the wave impings over the PEC, so definitely one it is using phase shift we are getting. Now, what is the property of AMC? We are we are not having the phase shift uh, in a reflected way. Correct. This is one of the property. Otherwise, what what will happen if you means you can manage a high gain or improve the radiation you see, if you back with a metallic plate, but you are supposed to put at lambda by four. Correct. This is one of the restriction. Correct. But using the AMC. Ah, this this uh, this limitation you can uh, you can manage it correct so in this way the compactness and the whole volume could be uh, small actually you can say the uh, the volume will be small because this is going to be a three D antenna because when you are backing it so this is not not a planar antenna actually correct okay so this provides actually uh, one two, zero degree phase shift this is one of the things that improves the uh, front to back ratio correct that is why we design an artificial magnetic conductor correct. So this is the analysis uh, we performed actually, correct? And we took this structure, correct? We made an array of this structure, correct? There is a logic actually what array we should take. I'll show you some of the uh, simulation, how we selected those things. So we we done an analysis and uh, what we found, we, we tried to manage such a way, its capacitor and inductors, correct? Uh, we, we cross verified with the ADS also, correct? And what we, we tried to manage it at the same frequencies, in same frequencies that where this antenna is working, correct? We designed this AMC where the same antenna is working, correct? So here you can see, uh, sorry, here you can see, uh, this is working at the same, okay? This shaded area, 3.3 to 3.99 gigahertz, correct? 690, 690 megahertz. Correct? Now we integrated, we also seen some of the different phases and we found that is okay, correct? In between that, correct? Ah, the phase shift is the, this, the gradual change we are getting. So this is quite acceptable and we can use as a AMC reflector, correct in our end, correct. So finally, uh, here you can see the miniaturization is we got 38.7 because this, this is structure actually we took uh, from one paper. This year, and this is a complementary of uh, that structure, correct. Further, we tried to uh, validate uh, its uh, circuit parameter and all things because we know there is a well established story for AMC, correct. Ah, so so this, this, this is actually what this is an LC resonator, you can say, correct. And uh, this LC and the are cavity kind of things is backing your antenna, correct? So finally, uh, we, we did some of uh, some of the parametric and we found that what actually happened. So what we found actually the changing of uh, the height actually so somewhat this this would be more sharp, correct? So we took actually 3.2, correct? This value actually, correct? And uh, we used actually this value to design our antenna, fabricate our antenna. Correct. And later on, uh, one more analysis we performed actually here, which is different uh, different uh, uh, arrays actually. Means like three cross three, four, four cross four, like that. Correct. It is not like that. We can it means you, you are you are 
you are free to use uh, 10 by 10 but the thing is the concept of the measurization will goes on correct so it means that we supposed we sufficiently find a ground plane correct or a reflector so that we can get a uh, acceptable gain and all the things correct so we run the simulation of what we found that uh, these things that 5 cross 5 will provide provide not not deteriorating your acceleration as well as uh, the input input as bandwidth as well as the gain also correct so this 5 cross for 5 we used actually correct and this is a sufficiently large distance correct to back this antenna correct and further we run some simulation over uh, these things different uh, heights and this and uh, what we found actually uh, this heights actually somewhat changing the input not actually matching uh, some somewhat it, it uh, disturbs but overall the bandwidth is remains same correct and uh, one of the things actually it affects your actual ratio what what we observed that this affects your uh, actual ratio the reason is actually quite clear because uh, we are backing uh, with this amc correct and the thing is because uh, when uh, the reflected wave is coming correct so it disturbs your what the phase actually what uh, happening between your single spectrum resonator and antenna correct so you need to take care you need to double very uh, verify correct these things correct so you can you can you can you can uh, you can uh, uh, you can uh, take a run actually over the h2 and make uh, the height uh, height of uh, the distance between the uh, antennas and uh, your AMC, correct? So, this is the thing, correct? Now, so finally, uh, you can see this is a geometry we place like this, correct? This is a form actually we use to separate the things, okay? So, here you can see we improved the things. Now, you can see we we, we did not disturb uh, the operating uh, operating band, correct? It is, it is still same, correct? Ah, so you can see this is without uh, MS and with MS and without uh, this things. All the things are there and we are not disturbing uh, the band, correct? And as well as the actual issue bandwidth is quite uh, it's okay in this uh, band actually acceptable and you will, you will see that you will surprise that we improve the gain and reduction efficiency. And this is very good actually, correct? Here if you see that with AMC structure we have 80% efficiency and the Peak efficiency is 88.4, whereas for without you are getting 72 and 82. Correct. So it's a good number actually. We increase by 10. Correct. And if you check the gain actually, correct. So gain uh, with AMC you have a very good gain. It's around uh, uh, five, uh, five or between 4.8 to 5 dB. Correct. It's quite good gain. Correct. So now I can say that uh, what I accommodated with this three, uh, this single antenna. That one thing is circling polarization I maintained, correct? Another thing, I improved the gain as well, correct? And keeping the fact that CRLX is still uh, is still there actually, that, that that particular theory is still valid here, correct? So we did all those things, correct? Now, this is a radiation pattern and radiation pattern must be in a direction, correct? Okay, this is not, uh, uh, this is a very obvious actually, correct? So particularly, this is this was a structure actually. Okay, uh, this is a paper where we took the idea and what we did, we make a dual of this. Correct, and making the dual of that, you, know, you will see that uh, the capacitance value actually we maintain the same. Correct. So this is similar kind of things, but you can say uh, by making the dual of this, we can neutralize the size of thirty-eight point seven percent. Correct. So this is one of the things. Now one of the very important result I would like to share with you that if you see the actual ratio here. And what we did actually, we 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 try to we try to check the actual ratio between plus minus forty five degree. This is somewhat very difficult actually, and in most of the handled applications, correct, you require this plus minus forty five degree, correct, because this 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 beam width is sufficient to run almost all the applications, correct. And we also check uh, the gain between plus minus forty five degree within this band, and we found it is uh, greater than three point three four. Correct, and this is suitable means uh, this handle applications. Correct, straight away we can use. Correct. So the thing is, this is a complete package. Package I would say. Correct, and this plus minus forty five degree. I would suggest to you the audience to please check the antenna because uh, sometimes we we are making the antennas correct, and we are getting the peak gain or this thing, and we are saying that that this is the antenna. Not actually well, like you have to check whether the sufficient beam width you are getting or not. Correct, sufficient gain is getting or not. Or what is the 
uh, this compact units, correct? So now what is, so this is the era where we want to keep the things our pocket, like your mobile, correct? So we want a small, small distance. The antenna is one of the notorious item actually, I would say, correct? So we need to, we need to handle it smartly, correct? So uh, in a same line, uh, later on, uh, uh, later on we, we did a walk actually, and uh, here the approach was somewhat actually conventional, I would say, because here we use the two CRL structure and we placed orthogonal, correct? You can see we placed orthogonal and we backed again with the AMC, correct, to improve the game, correct? So here, this is this is the same idea actually, correct? What we published in IEEE uh, magazine actually last year. So uh, the same idea, but the thing is here, uh, here we are maintaining uh, the orthogonal field component by having the two different, the CRLH structures. And the other question will be how you are managing these things that, uh, 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 the angle actually, the phase shift between these two orthogonal components. So I would say that there is a, uh, I'll show you these things. So so if you, if you see this uh, this picture actually, correct? So you will see this is P actually, correct? So this provides actually this, the changing the, of the electrical length of this P will sufficiently uh, provide you the scope varying this phase shift, correct? And by changing this, actually, we got a proper circular polarization within the structure, correct? So particularly for this structure, correct? For this structure, we, we done all sort of exercise, correct? And what we found, this is this is a proper CRL structure. This is not a ENG structure, correct? And this is uh, validated with the circuit uh, analysis also, correct? The same kind of analysis what I've shown actually, correct? And uh, here, if you see the size, this is a quite small, and this is 0 0.088 uh, lambda naught into 0.19 lambda naught at 2.5 gigahertz. Correct? Bandwidth is quite acceptable. Correct? So, idea is same. Ah, we have the virtual ground, we have the shunt inductor, we have uh, the series gap which provides the CL. Correct? And we manage like this. Correct? Okay. Now, here you can see while changing the P actually between this gap, you can manage your phase shift and hence you can manage the actual ratio bandwidth as well, correct? Okay. This is the equivalent socket, correct? So the same approach we used here and we try to find it out two different frequencies actually, correct? And further, we uh, we designed VMC meta, meta surfaces actually, correct? And uh, what we found, we designed at the same band actually, correct? And then we incorporated these things with the antenna, correct? And this is the same analysis what we performed in last uh, distance, correct? So finally, uh, the structure, if I show you, correct, uh, the results actually, so the results like that, we are getting the bandwidth is 2.18 to 3.04 gigahertz. This is 32.95 with 60 megahertz, correct? We have actually a bandwidth around 15.92, this is quite high, correct? And uh, we improved the gain and this is about 3.5 dB, correct? So same sort of things we manage but here the approach of the circular polarized antenna is different. We place the thing also manually. Whereas in a first structure, what I've shown you, I try to manage the electric, a different electric form from conventional structures, correct? So these are the two approaches could be managed. But the thing is, before that, we validated whether this follows the CRL's approach or not, correct? So these are some comparison. And recently in 2020, actually, we published some of the structures actually we keep walking over the CP antenna and we got very good bandwidth. Uh, the idea is almost same actually, correct? And uh, we coupled with the different uh, structures at the back, correct? And we loaded uh, uh, with some of the uh, stubs actually so that the orthogonal field could be managed, correct? So we'll not go in the detail, correct? So these are the some of the findings which we've done actually recently, correct? So if anyone interested, they can download and they can see. So finally, I would like to acknowledge uh, my students, correct, who worked actually very hard. And uh, this is uh, Mr. Mohammad Abu, who worked actually the CP antenna, the CP metamodal antenna, correct. These two students passed out and they they, they contributed uh, in uh, uh, linearly polarized antenna, Mr. Samir Kumar Shari, okay, and Ashish Gupta, correct. Thank you so much for listening. And if you have questions, I'm open for the question answer. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, sir, for such a nice lecture. Okay. So
now i am taking the questions from uh, so first question is which beta structure possesses wide bandwidth like uh, nothing this like uh, nothing this equal is coming at you equal is coming at you mm, from my side yeah yeah actually yeah, yeah. Yeah, I am sharing on my mic. It's just I am leaving the meeting from one device. Okay, so I left from one device now. Okay, thank you. Now are you thank getting you. the echo? Yeah, yeah. Okay. fine. It is now fine. It is now just. It's it's less actually. It's, it's less actually. Okay. Okay. So the thing is, uh, so the, the thing is, uh, the question is, uh, like how, uh, what, what structure we provided the wide. Uh, Correct. So I would say that uh, so don't change the structure. structure. You just change the structure. Uh, just check. basic structures, correct? And uh, try to find it out uh, the way that how you can handle the capacities. Like what we did actually. Uh, we manage the capacity in such a way, correct? Okay. Like uh, I can show you the things. Correct. So this is the structure actually. Okay, so here if you see this is a completely new structure, correct? And here see you can see there is a gap actually, correct? And this provides a sufficiently good capacitance, correct? Okay, and hence the thing is like uh, you can manage a very good bandwidth like what what we can uh, what we can have actually, because the basic idea what is the basic idea of uh, AMC artificial magnetic conductor is that these unit cell actually you can compost uh, as a uh, this thing. Okay, resonator, correct. And if you try to find out its impedance, so at a at a at a, at a low frequency, this behaves in inductive nature, and at a high frequency, this behaves in a uh, capacitive nature. Correct. So the thing is, you need to find it out the way that how you can manage the capacitance. Correct. So you know the possible ways that interstellar capacitance will gap between the two structures. Correct. So there are a lot of things you can try one unit cell and try to repeat the things and see the things. Correct. Huh? Otherwise, what you can do, you can start with the well-known structure, and uh, in this way, the things could be managed. Correct? Okay. Yes. Please. The question is from Hasan Naik. What information do we get from the dispersion diagram? Why is it necessary to plot dispersion diagram? Yeah, like in our case, uh, what I have shown particularly is that CLS transmission. Correct. So I have shown you that uh, like dispersion diagram. You will. Uh, we are having the negative beta and positive beta, correct? Negative dispersion and these things, correct? So the left-handed side particularly will provide you the information that you are getting uh, the negative flow and hence you have the negative beta, correct? Now the thing is, uh, we are very much interested that uh, uh, at n is equal to zero, correct? Particularly where the beta is equal to zero. In a normal uh, normal uh, materials or normal transmission line, correct? You cannot you cannot accommodate this beta is equal to zero. Correct. So, so the thing is, uh, when you are doing the CRL structure, correct. So you have the clear picture of the beta, uh, and beta is equal to zero, and by varying the capacity beta, you can see where your frequency is actually varying. Correct. And and the other way around, you can say that you can you can prove your claim that yes, you are you are you are uh, you are working with the CRL, and the theory are still you are still alive actually while making your antennas. Correct. Yes. Next question is from Srinivas Rao. Among microstrip and CPW feeding techniques, which one is better for UWB antennas? Between uh, CPW and uh, other ones? Hello? Among strip and CPW, CPW tech feeding technique, which one is better for UWB antennas? Uh, like, mainly, if you see uh, basically CPW, CPW antennas actually. Use for this UBW antennas and all actually correct. Wide for wide band antenna, particularly I'm not working with this ultra wide band antenna. But other thing is, uh, literature I found that this uh, for CPW feed you can use uh, to utilize uh, the wide band, correct. However, the thing is, uh, getting the wide band actually you can incorporate the different resonators, correct. Different loading elements in this way you can manage your impedance magnet and you can do other way around it. Correct. But uh, but the thing is, uh, like uh, most of the recent paper and the thing I have seen with the CPW. Correct. So you can go with the CPW. Correct. Yes, please. Next one. Sir, 
sir how the dimension of the virtual ground plane is calculated yeah this is actually uh, the thing is i would uh, i would recommend for this that you please check our radial structure correct this is a very conventional structure and uh, uh, you can find uh, many of the standard books correct so if you see the uh, radial structure so you see that capacitance is a function of theta correct what is theta that radial stuff the angle actually of the radial stuff so the thing is like uh, all, all the formulas are, are on given correct so what you can do you can find the capacitance in that and you can, you can plot the impedance correct or hence whether after that you can say that yes okay your uh, capacitance is uh, very large at that point correct with this dimension so definitely you can utilize as a virtual ground correct I I would recommend you please you please search uh, the radial stuff. Correct. I actually forget to put the formulas and all, but it is quite uh, quite actually clear and available in most of the textbook. You just uh, you can see the virtual ground or the radial stuff. Correct. Yes, please. Hello, Sanjeev. Sir, why gain of the antenna is very low? Can we make it very constant, even negative? Yeah, uh, actually, if you if you go in a conventional theory, uh, see the learning is correct in the first chapter, first or second chapter, correct? You will see there is a relation actually, correct? Gain and aperture. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. We are getting. Sir, we are getting. So, from the very basic actually, if you see uh, any antenna textbook, correct, you can say there is a relation between the gain and amplitude. Correct. So the idea is like uh, like many of the antennas we have should be both having a very good uh, or big aperture actually. Correct. And that is why they are making uh, the gain in a particular direction. Correct. So it is very obvious. This is a function of aperture. Correct. So that's why you have very less gain. And particularly, if you talk about the meter between on zero or frequency, you have uh, the omnidirectional. Uh, sorry, you have the what is normal electric field, correct? And hence you have the circulating magnetic uh, field. These things, correct? So this is one of one of the uh, another reason actually that in Z, at zero hour you are getting the always a negative kind of gain. But the thing is like uh, earlier, if you see the paper in published in 2008 and 12. Uh, almost all the zero hour antenna are providing the negative gain. Later on, uh, we did we started to turn thirteen or fourteen. Correct. So what we can see, this could be managed actually. It is not like that. Like, uh, like using the partial ground plane, correct. Uh, loading with extra capacitors and all, we can we can we can do the proper matching as well as we can improve the gain also. Correct. It's not very high because for getting very good gain, we require somewhat extra for like what we did here for ANC. Correct. So in this way, the things could be accommodated. The reason is quite clear actually for putting the group and it's, it's very much theoretical that it is a function of a budget. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the yes. next question is, does addition of capacitance in the metal surface increases the quality factor? So the next question is, does addition of capacitance yeah. in the metal surface increases the quality factor? Uh, yeah, surely, actually, the thing is, uh, we have not calculated. Correct, definitely, it 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 will affect your uh, quality. Factor. Correct, but uh, with with these meta surfaces, what you will do with the quality factor actually? What uh, like if you are asking the value actually, means uh, we have not calculated the quality factor. Correct, we just uh, check actually this the reflectivity and all those things. Correct. Yes, please. Mm, so the next question is by Kalyan Brata Ghosh. How the dimension of the virtual ground plane is calculated? The same answer I have given. Uh, like you can go with the radial stuff, correct? Uh, the formulas for capacitors and inductors already been given with the dimensions, correct? You have to calculate is L and C, correct? You have, for further, you have to, you, you, you can fix your Z. Then you can plot with the frequencies, correct? And whatever band you want to take, you just fix it your uh, dimension, and uh, you can utilize like the system. Okay, uh, sorry, virtual uh, okay. ground. Correct. Yes, please. 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 Yes,
yeah okay so next next question is by dr g s sharma that how we decide shape of dgs in an antenna design so like mainly uh, the thing is uh, shape is decided by like uh, what we used actually in some of our research like defected ground plane structures we used to subtract the surface okay and <clears throat> how how we how we performed actually these things that uh, we plotted actually the surface current correct because uh, how we get the sense first of all that uh, the gain and the crossover components very correct so we, we plotted the things correct over the related correct over the entire geometry and what we what we have seen that some of the components some of uh, some of the field components extra field components are are there actually correct so for that actually if you make uh, the surface then make discontinuous but how we do we supposed to make some discontinuity correct so mainly uh, one of the things i have shown we just use the different slotted correct uh, in a controlled way means uh, uh, regular slots actually we provided so in this way we, we use the defective ground plane to reduce the surface current correct so it actually it actually depends actually that you know, what kind of uh, discontinuity what kind of uh, uh, surface current you want to handle and then only you can uh, decide the thing correct but the thing is like uh, like the, these are the question why these are the question ask me like i would uh, i would i would uh, suggest or means uh, recommend some of the things correct that there is a book actually correct for the participants i would like to suggest that one book is written by him well correct so please go through that book correct and what you will see uh, mainly the structures early late late nineties and nineties actually with the, these things were this were invented and uh, you will see that the slots correct meter line inductor and uh, split in resonator kind of things correct and different kind of structure resonator and all the things they they calculated actually they calculated okay uh, and uh, from from there actually uh, you can get the idea that how the things are working what slot width you will take okay what slot length you will take so all those this idea will be because there is a clear cut relation between the dimension and the capacity correct so please check otherwise you can write to me correct uh, i'll i'll try to provide you the proper link for that okay okay so the, the next question is by manish mathew what is the significance of negative gain of antenna actually we are calculating in db actually if you try to convert in on a number this is a positive step correct but the thing is uh, like like uh, the gain is a very important parameter correct ultimately the di directivity is going to uh, decide actually correct with this things so once you have the this gain correct uh, so the thing is like uh, it it it, it uh, directly connected with your uh electrical magnetic field intensity and as the uh power density correct so mainly what uh, what actually you are doing in a lab correct you are measuring the power density correct okay so uh, if you have the very less gain correct uh, so the thing is like uh, like like at, at, at the receiving side uh, you can you, you cannot expect a uh, sufficiently uh, uh good or high uh, distance uh, power density correct and you are getting the things at the noise level so it is sometimes quite difficult actually to measure and and after that uh, if, if you utilize in some of the application you cannot actually use correct so the, uh, that is why mainly uh, the gain actually we are taking about 2d correct in most of the uh, handle applications okay correct um, yes sir so the next question is while designing a cp antenna the axial ratio bandwidth is higher than impedance bandwidth is that justifiable yeah definitely because these are the two different things try to understand one is a one is one bandwidth is a this is called a matching correct how we are getting this is an input reflection curve correct another is a axial ratio bandwidth which is a due to the quantum parameter correct and how this bandwidth is going to be decided this is going to be decide your ortho how how perfectly you manage the orthogonal component as well as how you manage the phase shift between these two components correct 
so definitely this is not a uh, bad thing you can you you can get actually the larger bandwidth maybe you you sufficiently manage a very good or small component correct in a powerful reason that is why you get this. yes yes yeah, so next question is uh, how your virtual ground offers high capacitance uh, it depends on the structure actually correct it, it depends on the structure again i would say it depends on the structure like uh, for your uh, this things information like uh, like 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 uh, you can take one example actually correct you have a two wires or two uh, two straight uh, this things uh, planar uh, planar lines correct so what what it will, it will offer uh, capacitance but not uh, very high but the thing is if you compare with the interstitial capacitor correct so there are a lot of fingers are there correct so you have the large capacitor in, in the same way actually the radial stub and other similar kind of structures are providing a very high capacity and hence we can decide on whole systems right yeah so next question is how we find good gain in spiral and how to get impedance matching in spiral i am not uh, working actually on the spiral antenna so uh the thing is uh, like i i would be not a correct person na uh, to answer this question you can you can you can discuss with those who are working with the spiral antennas right what is the 3d antennas okay. right so okay uh, next question is by nikun kumar mishra what is zero order antenna uh, that is zor and correct zero order resonance so as i told you zor correct so particularly when beta is equal to zero correct so you have the extra flexibility that you can go upside and downside If I'm talking about the frequency, you can you can accommodate the lower frequency as well. You can accommodate the higher frequency on the same system. But you, uh, but the thing is, you you supposed to ask that how? The answer is that you supposed to manage the capacitance and inductance. Correct? How you manage the structure you have taken? Correct? From those structure you can manage. Correct? So the antenna working at that uh, uh, beta is equal to zero. Correct? We are calling it as zero. Correct? Zero to zero antenna. Correct? Yeah. Uh, sir, the next question is how to draw lumped circuit for designed antenna. Uh, so this question is coming again. Uh, I mean, I mean, I would, yeah, I think yeah, this is question yeah, again. I would, I would like to uh, share one slide actually with you guys. Correct, you please see. Correct. And I think it will be it will be good to audience. They can understand the thing that how the things are working. Correct. Just give me one. Recently, actually, I have given a talk on the basic transmission. Correct. So here, actually, I have shown all those things. Okay. So let me share the slides. Yes, to connect. Can you see now? Can you see now? So, Sanjeev, can you see? Hello. Hello, Sanjeev. Can you see? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can see it. We can. Ah, yes, yes. Yeah. So, so please, please, check. please check. Actually, this is uh, one of the book. Actually, Architect House, London. Actually, published two thousand seven. My Monkey at All. Correct. So, this is the book. It's very, very good book. Actually, I recommend uh, uh, to participant. Please go through this book because what what is happening nowadays uh, is many many uh, many groups are working this thing and. Uh, sometimes we are taking the arbitrary structures. We don't know that why we are taking them. By running the simulation here and there, we are saying okay, we are getting the things. But the thing there is a logic behind it. But try to understand why. So, like if you see this table actually, correct. So what you can see, this is the transmission line of less than 90 degree. Correct. So this is the property of the transmission line which is less than uh, electrical line 90 degree or this is lambda by four. Correct. We are getting the inductor. Okay. And you have uh, open mode case less than 90 degree. You have the capacitance. Correct. So now you can you get the get the idea that how you can manage the capacitance inductance. Okay. Hmm? So in a similar way, if you are terminating uh, these structures, correct? These stops 90 degree. Beta L is equal to 90 degree. Beta. This is theta is electrical length. Beta is 90 degree. Correct. So this this become uh, as a work as a resonator. Correct. Whereas open-ended case, this is a series resonator. Correct. Likewise, correct. 
so 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 this is the thing actually and once you have this this idea correct so you can manage like some of the circuits i can show you correct you please check this is some of the planar inductor correct in late uh, 80s or 90s people are uh, managing the planar inductor with the circuits correct these are the well known formulas correct i don't have time actually i just give sanjeev you given just one hour actually that is why i did not actually take in the slides correct so like here you can see these are the some spiral inductor we can manage all these things correct similarly for the capacitor as well you can uh, you can manage uh, the capacitor from these circuits correct so th th these are the basic things actually uh, like when we started the research over the mechanical antenna correct so then we found correct that how we can do the capacitor how we can do the inductor correct so this this actually provides you the idea correct that how you how you will perform the things correct i hope i hopefully you know this will this will be uh, solve the purpose why right? what i do to you huh? who asked this question hello is yeah how to decide the dimension of unit cell size shape any specific method same answer is same correct answer is same that you supposed to go through the basic things yeah. correct yes yeah next question is how mutual coupling I, i have given you the enough detail for that correct yeah. and the yeah. thing is uh, these these books you supposed to manage correct okay yeah. otherwise otherwise uh, uh, in, in some other session in some other times and when i i'll take the simple transmission and lecture correct definitely i'll i'll do the things in detail correct Uh, how mutual coupling between adjacent can be minimized using meta material yeah actually nowadays you know i like if you see uh, you guys see that particularly mimo antenna okay so people are using the mimo antenna and they are trying to reduce the uh, mutual coupling means uh, like uh, uh, better to call it the decoupling network correct so the thing is this could be done uh, five ways actually i would say correct how one is a decoupling network means filters Correct. You can use the filters. Another is FSS. Correct. Another is DGS. Correct. And then after meta material or meta circuits. What is the idea? Try to understand. The idea is almost same. The thing is like if you are using the filter, you supposed to design a band stop. Correct. And that frequency, that particular band stop meter will be stopped. Correct. So at that point, there will be, there will be very good isolation. Correct. In the same way, the meta material can do also. Correct. That particularly at uh, those things you can manage such an away correct so that uh, so that surface current could be minimized actually correct with the help of the meta circuits correct so what you can do you can you can provide the sufficient uh, large capacitance or inductance so that it could be managed correct okay yes yes sir then next question can you please request sir to show slide number 42 slide number 42 Can you show me? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. What is the question? Please tell. Yeah, only this this much is written there. I think they have missed the. Okay. And the one question is last question is there? Any preferable textbook for designing of lump circuit of antenna? Yes. Uh, like not antenna particularly you you can you can use two books correct one is written by indra mahal another is written by mukti correct these are the two uh, two man actually you know who did a very good job and particularly kc gupta correct you can see some of the books of the kc gupta and uh, one of professor at delhi actually uh, professor call who did a very good job actually and in late uh, this thing 90s correct you can see uh, the book of the professor call also correct yes please okay thank you sir thank you sanjeev thank you sanjeev. i think all the questions has been answered okay Okay. Hello, sir. Okay. Are you getting my voice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting. I'm getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. getting. I'm getting. Uh, sir, I think all the questions have been answered of the participant, 
and okay. i would like to thank okay. you on behalf of itpally rajasthan subsection itpally aps chapter jaipur government women engineering college ajmer and mnit jaipur okay. and sir you have in the very short span of time you have covered so many topics like the antenna versus patch antenna circularly polarized antenna stepwise designing of different antennas equivalent circuit modeling meta material antennas artificial magnetic conductors so many things you have covered in a short span and thanks for a vibrant lecture thanks, and uh, all the, thanks, yeah all the participants i think get motivated from your work by seeing this as well as i seeing your lab facilities you have developed in, in your institute and i personally thank you for such a nice lecture thank you so much thank you so much yes sir can i leave can i leave yes yeah, sure sir. thank you sir Thank you. thank you participants thank you. we will meet tomorrow morning again yeah so tomorrow's morning thank session you, is just we are talking a little bit early that will start at 9:30 tomorrow we are having the three talks one is at 9:30 am second one is 11 10:45 and the third one is the same time that is 2 pm okay thank you everyone